Hi, my name's Keith Cooper of Northlight Images. It's just a short video about some of the tools I use during my printer testing. Uh, in particular, USB microscopes. Now, I, I had one for many years, but one of the problems was that it was very low resolution. So I thought, well, about time, you know, got a better one. Now, they're not terribly expensive these days. The two I've got here are from a company that I have worked with and tested stuff with for many years, long before I started making the videos. In fact, the tripod that I've got my camera on here that I'm filming this is a KNF or KNF concept. You'll see the name on it. Um, it's one of their uh, tripods. Now, I put some links to my various reviews I've done over the year on the Northlight Images website. They cover all sorts of bits and pieces. But anyway, um, they'd got this. I was talking about and they said, well, we've got two of these little USB microscopes. Would you like to try them? Well, as ever, never want to say no for this because it was something I actually needed. I thought, right, I've got these two here. Now, one of them looks much fancier than the other. It's got an adjustable stand. Uh, both of them have got lights, which I'm not using at the moment. They've got internal LED lights, which you can adjust. Both of them can be connected wirelessly to phones and things. I'm simply not interested in that. I don't use phones for anything like this. Um, take the odd picture or so for illustrating this, but I don't actually use them, certainly not for this. But if you were looking for this, then this one here, with the adjustable stand and it moves up and down if it's correct and it's it's good focusing this is rather nice this one here seems it's much simpler now i've got them both connected uh, via usb to this laptop here um, support you can see uh, this is using the um, apple's photo booth application, which is a generic video input device. You can take photos as well. It's obviously just using the uh, picture, you know, the camera on the laptop here, which is a good one, HD, and gives me a comparison of image quality with these. Let's just switch to a different camera. There we go. This is this camera here, and I'm looking at this little memory chip here. And I'm using this light here. I've covered this, this light elsewhere, but it's just a you know, general purpose rechargeable light. I use very useful for stuff like this. But if I put the lights on of this, you would get reflections and things. So you have to be a bit careful using the internal lights. It's easier to show here as well. Uh, this one has all various tricks. It's wireless as is this one, a little display on it telling me it's trying to connect via Wi-Fi, uh, which I'm not using. I'm just using the USB connection. You can adjust the focus, uh, the uh, viewpoint, and then you can adjust this as well. So you can get variable magnification. So if I just adjust that, I've got quite a nice view of the resistors on that. And that's just lit from this, as you can see there, it just goes. Now, okay, this is obviously a far more useful one than this one here, which has a little stand on it, which is quite useful. If I put this one, uh, switch the camera over to the other one, you can see what is actually a really useful thing that came with this. It is a tiny little printed graticule for measuring things. So I can precisely measure it. It's reversed in this. When you take the snap, it switches out. It's because it's meant for sort of, you know, pictures of people and things. Uh, you just have to get used to looking at the live view here reversed. Uh, Windows application is probably better. There may even be a Mac application which works better than this. But this, is, this does it perfectly well for what I want. So there we go. I've just got a picture. What's to decide between them? Well, as I said, this one looks initially far more useful because of the controls, the adjustments. But, and here's the important bit, read the specifications. Because, and I suspected this from looking at the images from them. If I look at the specifications of one of this one here, it says picture resolution 1920 by 1080, video resolution 1280 by 720. Whereas this one here is actually video resolution and picture resolution are 1920 by 1080. What that means is that this one has a much higher resolution chip in it than this one. So this one, fine detail I can see. If I look at, for example, I'm just going to put one of my test prints and I've got 
dozens and dozens of test prints. I'm t uh, print, testing uh, a Canon printer at the moment. If I put this one underneath here, we may even be able to see, yes, I can see the ink droplets. Uh, and I can see this is a black and white image. And I can see that, uh, well, yeah, it's coloured ink drops because grayscale, unless you use a specific mode on the 1100, has a little bit of colour ink added into the mix to keep it neutral. Now, that works to varying degrees, but I've got lots of stuff looking at that. So, I'm in a bit of a quandary, really, um, because this one here is a better quality, image quality microscope. It is much simpler in terms of connectivity. Whereas this one, if I was getting, say, uh, yeah, a present for somebody, you know, for you know, nephew or some niece, and wanted them to you know, just have an experiment or something, something to play around with, I would get this. Now, you can, with modern phones, you can zoom right into stuff, you can use additional lenses, so it's not as simple as it was. But this is, in terms of, I would say, for educational use, much more flexible because there's a stand and everything like that for it. Whereas this one, for my use, comes with this, as I say, this very useful little graticule and grid. There's a grid there showing how much fine detail there is. This one, if you're actually wanting proper pictures out of it, this is better than this one. And so they both, they both have their features. Anyway, that's all. Um, I'll cover some other um, various bits and pieces of hardware in little short videos as well. I mean, one of the ones that I also uh, use from CanF is this, uh, and this is an M42 um, screw fit lens to Fuji GFX. Um, an awful lot of screw fit lenses have image circles big enough to work on small medium format, which is the GFX 100S. So use some of those old lenses. I've tested quite a few old lenses, but this is just nice and easy to use. I can use adapter rings. Um, yeah, you'll find lots of these things, but they, they do stuff like this, filters and various things. But um, anyway, thanks to them for answering my question about this. And what am I gonna do? Well, actually, I'm gonna take this one put a bit of tape on it to make it slightly thicker and use it in the stand of this one because this one's more useful microscope this one's easier to use in terms of just general usability anyway if you've got any sort of bits and pieces of stuff i do or use that you're curious about do just let me know um, I, I, i've got drawers full of stuff like this and i sometimes people are interested in it thanks for watching and uh, bye